Good evening, everyone. Started yet? Oh, here we go. Good evening, everyone. We'll just wait for a couple of people just to see if they're joining. Um, and would like to say welcome to the Year 11 GCSE Information Evening. Um, if you have any questions that you'd like us to answer during this time, uh, please use the chat function on the YouTube and we'll be able to answer questions. Some of them might be answered as we go through the presentation um, or we'll probably leave most of them to the end and then we can answer those questions at that time. So we thought it would be beneficial for um, parents and students to get some information about exams this year. It's been obviously nearly three years since we've had a full set of GCSE exams. Um, and in that sense, some things have changed. Some things are very much the same, but it has been a while for everybody since they've done exams. And I realised this myself when I was doing my mock speaking exams. That I'd forgotten some of the key things and it was a good practice for me. So I think it's about getting that information so everyone's really aware of what's going on. Um, also, a number of changes have happened this year and probably some of you have some questions around perhaps what happens if my child gets COVID, for example, and what are the contingency arrangements around that and what we're doing as a school as well to support that. So I'm just going to get started now. So Welcome to everyone, and I do hope you're well. It's a lovely sunny evening, so thank you very much for joining us, um, and uh, perhaps you are joining us from your gardens. So, first of all, um, I just want to go through some key dates with you in terms of exams. Um, are any students who've done NEA work for subjects such as art, textiles, DT, food and nutrition, dance and drama, all that work um, is being marked and uh, uploaded now to exam portals. Um, some students' work will then be moderated by an external moderator who comes in. Some will be sent off. Um, uh, some will be sent off for um, external moderation. So that work is now ongoing and most of those subjects have finished that work for their NEA. Where they've still then got exams, that's con they're continuing to revise for those exams. But for some subjects, such as art, where the work has been finished, um, the students can then use that time in lessons to revise. It's important they do bring some independent work within that. Um, the first real set of exams start on the Wednesday, the 4th um, of May, and that's the MFL speaking exams. So it's different days for different teachers, and students can find out that information um, from their um, French or German teacher. So they run from Wednesday the 4th to Friday the 6th of May. There's quite a long deadline for that. So that's the time that students can um, then, um, if, they, if they need to, if they're absent, can be caught up. They've extended the uh, window for that one. Um, probably the biggest question um, that... Um, we get asked about students is when they're going on study leave. And um, at the moment, um, for students, they um, won't have the same study leaves they've had during their mock exams. We know during the actual exams, it's quite a hefty period of time for students uh, to do their own independent re revision. So we um, provide a targeted revision timetable now, there's going to be times when students are in exams, there's a lot of exams they've got to cover, um, and there's going to be then certain times uh, for students to come in for revision, or potentially we're now, given the current situation with COVID, looking at doing many of these virtually. This revision timetable is personalised for each individual student depending on what subjects they do and what revision they need to have. That's currently being worked on and will be with students, which has all their exams on and their revision on. Um, and it will be on during, uh, yeah, with them by the beginning of next week. That revision timetable will begin on Monday the 16th of May, which is the same time as the actual exams start. And then their final exam, obviously, is the Friday the 24th of June. We then will be looking at a celebration assembly, which will be after the final exam and with prom um, as a big celebration to finalise the time at uh, Final Heath End on Friday, the 1st of July. 
Um, and then on the, the results day is Thursday, 25th of August. And we will uh, send um, information out about um, that closer to the time. So you know what times you can arrive um, and how you get your results and what to do if you can't pick up your results on that day because you're on holiday for some reason. Um, so we'll send that out closer to the, the time. Just to go through with you what the actual differences are, because one of the things that anyone who works in education is fully aware of um, and what Ofqual have done um, is look at the fact that this year group have been substantially affected by the student, by the pandemic. Um, and students have missed a substantial amount of face to face learning as well as content time as well. Um, so for that, there's been a reduction in the amount of NEA work that's been done and more flexibility within that. So, for example, in P, there's only been two sports as opposed to three. In certain subjects, it's optional content. Um, so, for example, in um, English, that's a good example for that one that they have, aren't in the poetry anthology. For additional support materials for things like physics and maths so that they don't have to remember formulae. Um, advanced information for subjects uh, such as um, MFL, where we know topics for certain, that are going to come up. Science also has that. And then there's going to be um, the generous grading. Whilst we can't say exactly what that will look like in, in reality, what they have said is 2019 grade boundaries will be the harshest grade boundary that they would use and grades will be somewhere between what was awarded in 2019 and then what was awarded last year for tags in 2021. So they've said halfway between. What that actually means in terms of grade value will very much depend on how students perform on the day um, for that. But that's the dangers the exam boards have made. That can all be found on the Ofqual website, can be found, um, all the advanced information can be found on exam board websites. And I've actually put the links to all of this um, um, on a page and I'll send this out to all parents at the um, tomorrow as well. One of the biggest things to make sure that students have got so they don't panic and they can just effectively get on with their exams is that they have all the necessary equipment for them. So it's really important that all students have several black pens for them to work. Um, they do run out, especially in big exams, so make sure they've all got several black pens a pencil, an eraser and a ruler are absolute minimum requirements for every exam. In addition, all the maths calculator exams, every science exam, the enterprise exam and the geography exams will require a calculator. Maths will also require a math set, a full math set. And we also recommend um, the use of highlighters in the subjects like English and history where they can annotate sources and texts. This should all be carried in in a transparent pencil case um, or a transparent bag. Lots of students use sort of the uh, sort of plastic wallets as well to bring that in. And in terms of bringing a drink into the exam, of course they're allowed to bring a drink in. Um, they can bring it in in a, either a transparent water bottle or if they've got a plastic water bottle, the label needs to be removed from that. So that's the big equipment that they need to bring in for this. Um, I want to go through what the exam board regulations are. And there are they are quite strict on these rules, um, so that we are really aware that if they they flout them, we have to report that. If they miss things, we also have to report that as well. Morning exams, so students will sit exams primarily. So ninety nine point nine percent of students will only have exams either starting at eight thirty in the morning or at one thirty in the afternoon. They then have, punctuality is very important, and we begin to enter them to the exam hall at 8.30. Once the exam has started, and we do get through in this year group, have been fantastic at getting into exam rooms, we then have a maximum of a half an hour window for students to be able to enter the exam hall. If they arrive after that half an hour window, they cannot be admitted to the exam room. And that is a JCQ guideline. Now, we do sometimes have students whose alarms don't go off and they do wake up in a panic. To reassure you, can I stress that if you do, this does happen to you 
or something happens, a bus breaks down, the car doesn't start, or for whatever reason you think you're going to be late, to contact Mrs. Easton on reception. And if necessary, myself and Mrs. Deans have both been out to get students if they need a lift to come into school. So we do that as well, if that is a case. If you think you're going to be late for any reason, that we will do that. If you haven't turned up to an exam, please do expect a phone call as well. Um, we will call home um, and we will call all phone numbers that we've got available to get you into the exam because it's really important that you attend all of your exams that you can attend. So 8.30, my suggestion is always that you're arriving in good time so you're not rushed and you're not flustered. And then 1.30 for afternoon exams. Phones cannot be at any point in an exam. It doesn't matter if they're switched off. They just cannot be on your person. They need to be handed in or put in your locker. I might suggest that you probably don't need them even in school with you unless you need them to call someone to come and get you at the end of an exam. Even then you could use one of the school phones or ask someone to call for you. Um, and they are not allowed in the exam room. If you do, it is quite a serious matter. We do have to report it to the exam board. And at this point, we could end up, um, it could affect your grade. So just to be safe and, and absolutely sure, absolutely no phones. And that goes for all electronic wrist devices as well, such as Fitbits and I and iWatches as well. Do not have them on you in the exam or anywhere near you on your person. There can be no bags in any exam room. So I know some students um, are used to bring an exam and put it at the front of a, bag, at the front of a room. That cannot happen. They cannot go. They should be put in lockers. If you don't have access to your locker, you've now got a couple of weeks to get yourself your key sorted. Um, or alternatively, don't bring a bag with you, but no bags in the exam room at all. The change to JCQ this year is you're not allowed your own wristwatch at all. So we've talked about um, electronic wristwatches, but you're not allowed um, any kind of wristwatch. We've invested in a display program that will be projected onto the TV screens in the classrooms that are used and onto the TV screens in the hall, um, which will display and very large font, um, the accurate time for students. And we're able to put the start time, end time, extra time on there, and what the current time is. So students can use that to time themselves from, because obviously timing is really important. And I know so many students who speak to me, they go, I just missed, I just didn't finish. So that's how they need it. They won't be allowed to bring a wristwatch into their exams now either. Students must know their candidate numbers. They are asked to put those on the front of every single exam. Um, they are always on the seating plan. It's a four digit number. What we have found during the mocks is some reverse numbers or mixed numbers up or aren't quite sure. We will give them out to them again during tutor time over the next couple of weeks, but just really make sure you know what your candidate number is. It's the same for every exam. So you will get really bored of writing it on every paper. When you're in the exam room, one of the things I think some students aren't always aware of is at the moment you enter that exam room, you cannot communicate with anyone apart from an invigilator in any way. So that includes turning around, looking at them. When they finish the exams and they leave the room, they cannot talk until they're actually outside of the exam room. So it's just reminding because they're always really keen and eager to talk to their friends about how well they've done or discuss what was on the paper. They just need to keep it until they're outside the exam room as well. And I think it's always worth mentioning that some people don't want to discuss what they did and how it went for them, especially perhaps if it hasn't gone as well as they wanted to or they feel quite nervous about it. And I think just for students, perhaps not everybody does want to talk to them about it. So that's a really important thing to remember as well. If at any point you do need help during an exam or you do need to go to the toilet, um, obviously just put your hands up and there's an invigilator in the room and they will escort you to that or they will get you any help that you need. I know some students at the moment are really suffering and we get it every year during exam season with hay fever. Unfortunately, you can't bring your own tissues into the exam room. You, we, have, we provide them for you. So that's one thing you can't bring in, but we do obviously recommend that you 
um, use that you bring your own water so you've got a drink we use for the the main room we use is a hall so it has air conditioning so it's a, a much um, more ambient temperature for students and um, for concessions room they will be based in bowler or johnson so that whole area can be sealed off for students during their exams as well i think there's a couple of students it's very very few but a couple of students do have a clash um, if you do have a clash of exams you will do your exam at a different time, but on the same day, and we will speak to those students individually about that. In terms of concessions, so all concessions have now been agreed, nothing can be added. The only concession that sometimes we have to add very last minute is if a student breaks their arm or wrist or leg during this time and they have to be moved to a different room or accommodated in some kind of different way. It does happen. Um, so those, all those concessions are the same as what you've had in your mocks. They are roomed according to certain guidance that we receive from the example, so JCQ, um, who tell us how we have to room that. So that's been done. Um, if you, um, as I said, we, they are in classrooms as done before. If you have a scribe, for your exam room or were placed in an individual room for a certain reason for that exam, then that will continue for this time. And we use offices which are closest to the exam hall for that. And again, we have to follow all the same regulations in the concessions rooms as we do in the main hall regarding bags, phones, watches and communication. If you've got any questions regarding con uh, concessions, can I recommend you contact Mrs. Mulvey? I've put her email address here for you um, and you can contact her if there is anything you need to be aware of. If anything unfortunate happens, like a broken arm or anything like that, and you know, fingers crossed, nothing will, please do let myself um, or Mrs. Armstrong know as soon as possible and we can then get uh, stuff in place for you. I think one of the big things people are most uh, wary of this year and perhaps concerned about is if you are ill in any way. And we do get a number of students every year, just to reassure you, who have missed exams through illness, such as a sickness bug, because also you cannot come into school if you've got a sickness bug or you've, you know, anything like that. Um, to reassure you, obviously, yes, you'd call the school, you would follow the same absence procedure, but my suggestion would be, please do contact myself and Mrs Armstrong in terms of exams. So if you contact both of us, we do both check our emails regularly so we can then communicate with you about what you need to do if you need to get medical evidence for any way or to reassure you about how we can support you with it. When you are ill, we apply for something that's called special consideration um that does cover um a range of experiences that students can uh, you know happen can happen to a student during exams um 25 percent of an exam has to be completed so for example where you've got two papers say in biology you have to complete at least one of them that's really important it's the only way they're going to award your grades this year so the biggest thing, and that's one thing they said is around for, for COVID, you have to follow the guidance that's been set out by the government and the health security agency for COVID. So that guidance um, is to follow the uh, what's been there nationally. So if you do test positive for COVID, the guidance recommends that you stay at home for three days after you've tested positive. So that's four days in total. I'm aware for some students that they might still continue to feel ill after that and might not feel well enough to do an exam. If they do feel well enough to come in after that, then I would recommend they do come in. Again, if you think you have got some kind of respiratory tract infection in any kind, just because there's going to be a lot of students in one room, you may feel more comfortable then wearing a mask which obviously then prevents infection to other people. That's about being community minded. We can't enforce that and we won't be enforcing it, but it might be something to consider if, um, if you do have a cough or a cold and you don't want to pass it on to your fellow students as well. We do need medical evidence if it's not a COVID based illness. So if you are absent for an exam because of, so my experience historically, so I have had a student miss one because they broke their arm um, and they had to go to get it set that day. They had to go to the hospital that day. Um, sickness bug, um, severe ear infections I've had before as well. 
and that requires medical evidence so i will we will need you to send in some medical evidence for that but we don't require it for covid okay um and but again my suggestion would be if you're concerned please contact myself or mrs armstrong brown and we will be able to advise you on what needs to happen within that Again, we might have further guidance on this coming from exam boards or from Ofqual, uh, depending on how cases move and what's happening nationally. Um, and we will obviously provide you with the most up-to-date information as we get it. Because we're aware of the high levels of COVID in the community at the moment, one of the things, as I said earlier, we will be looking at is potentially moving some of the revision sessions that we perhaps would have done in school to virtual revision sessions. But for some students, we know that that will have to take place in person and it will be assessed based on need in terms of that, um, whether they come into school or have it virtually. One of the big things we need to be aware of during this time is managing student well-being. They've got a large number of exams spread out over a, a longer period. And the reason for that is the 10 day gap between um, they've given 10 days between all the major exams. So the two English exams have a language of 10 days between them. So they're a bit longer that the, the, the exam period is longer than normal. It's really important during this time that students have balance so that they do revise and they do work hard, but they still need to have rest time and downtime and some time off. That balance is really important so they don't experience burnout and they don't get overwhelmed. So make sure that that is built into any revision schedule um, and also that during, they're not revising so late into evenings as well. This is probably not going to be a popular one, but brains need food. Um, and therefore, arriving to your exam without having had anything. I know some of you turn up every day to school without it, but I really recommend that you have breakfast and that you do rest you are, it is going to be tiring doing exams and some of you will have two very big exams on one day. You are going to need to rest for that. In terms of key adults where you can, for parents, you can ask for support from um, or where students can go for support. Obviously, first port of call, we've already um, recommend the form tutor, Mrs. Snedden as um, head of year and year leader, Mrs. Deans as assist assistant head of year, anyone in student services, that people can go to their non-teaching members of staff so students can go to them during the school day if they are feeling overwhelmed. If students have special educational needs and are linked to the SEND department, they could obviously go to Miss Cornell and Mrs Trantham or any member of the SEND team. And I'm always available during year 11 exams as well for any students that are concerned or have any worries at this time as well. Um, and I think that bit, I'm going to pass over to Mrs. Snedden, who's going to talk a little bit about revision. OK, um, so one of the things that students have said around the mock times in particular is that they don't know how to revise. Um, so I did upload onto the Google Classroom a whole load of different strategies for trying out um, to, to see which strategy actually helped them the most for their exams and actually help them to remember the key points that they need to remember. Um, so to support this revision, we are going to be using the PSHE time this half term is on a Monday morning is purely around revision. And also during tutor time, so twice a week, I have been getting tutors to release another strategy for them to try out. And then during the PSHE time, that is what we're going to be doing. So students are to bring with them some uh, topics and areas that they want to revise during that time. And they will test out some of those different strategies that we've been looking at over the last few weeks. Um, if you want to see any of those strategies, as I say, they are all on the Google Classroom. So their tutor group page. So they are all there. So please do support um, the young people when they are revising and maybe giving them some some quick round tests and things on key parts of information that's brilliant and I know they find that really useful and finally um, it is always really good to create a revision timetable to make sure that you space out all of the topics that you need to revise within subjects but also so you don't miss any subjects as well so 
If you need any support with creating timetables, I know we did some before in our mock exams, but we can always send out blank copies of revision timetables. Please remembering to put in our breaks and our hobbies, as well as Ms. Hoggy just said about making sure you get that balance correct. Thank you. And so just to finish off, obviously we've got, um, so I've got some useful websites for you and for your son or daughter to look at. So I've got here all the, the exam board websites. Um, there's a student guide to exams, which is quite helpful if they're a bit worried about how things are going to work um, and the different, um, how things are going to be assessed and marked, there's some information on there. And I've put in here the full document around special consideration guidance in case anyone particularly wants to read it, is concerned about how it might affect them in any way, shape or form. Um, and we do all the special considerations and we do that at the end of the exam period, but that's why we need the evidence and the logging for that as well. Just to go through a couple of the questions that I have seen come through, the big one obviously was around study leave. So um, one, as I said, there is no targeted study leave. It is a revision based timetable, organized revision. That timetable, which has got the exams and their child, your child's individual revision on it as well will be issued towards the beginning of next week um, they've just had a look at what they look like it's really clear to students where they need to when they need to be in school when they've got an exam and when they've got revision as well there will be revision sessions that run before school for certain exams and if a, if a student does attend a morning session before school because they will start morning sessions start at about 7 45 we will provide breakfast for students or uh, give them the offer of breakfast if they attend a morning session as well um, that's quite good for very last minute hints and tips um, and just getting into that frame of mind but for some students we know that that might not always be the thing they want to attend because they prefer to be a little bit more individual, a bit more on their own before they go into the exam room. They prefer not to be around so many people as well. Um, I think I've covered all the questions, so I will just wait and see if there's any more questions around that. Mrs. Snedden, have you seen any other questions? Um, there was just one other question about the proper exam timetable and when that will be released. Um, as far as I'm aware, that has already gone out to students via their emails. But if any student hasn't received theirs, then please do let me know and we'll make sure that that comes out because they were individualised. But these revision timetables will also have that on it as well. So it will be, I've got one as an example here, I can't show you it, unfortunately it's got a student's name on it, but it has the five weeks each day, breakfast, period one and two, period three and four, because everything's done in sort of blocks like that, and then period five and six and after school, and what students can, what students should be attending at that time. Um, so I think there's, if, there's, if there's no more questions uh, no. that have come through at the moment, no. I'd just like to say thank you very much for attending this evening, and thank you for your uh, support. Oh, once exams mm -hmm. start, they go home. So if they've got an exam, in the morning, let's let's give it, I think it's probably best of an example. So a student has an exam period one and two, they um, they will have that quest, they will have that exam. If they then don't have revision, or that revision has been switched to virtual for, for COVID-based reasons, then they are free to go home. Students will need to sign out if they are going home as well, so that we've got a record of who's on site and who's not on site. That's for safeguarding reasons in terms of fire and for obvious health and safety reasons. If a student has to remain in school, so for example, they've got an exam in the morning, they don't have a revision session and then they have an exam in the afternoon, for example, or they have a revision session in the afternoon, then we will, students will be able, year 11 will be given the strategy zone for that time if they don't have an exam to work in. So they will be offered that strategy. We cannot offer them the library because the library is used as a teaching space. They won't be able to go round and ask teachers for revision materials at that time. So they need to come prepared with revision materials. They won't be able to access Chromebooks because they're being used by other year groups for exams and for teaching purposes. So if they've not, if they've got an exam and they're finished the day, yes, they can go home and they sign out. And the same would be if they don't have anything till 11 o'clock, they don't need to be in school until 11 o'clock and would need to sign in. And we'll go through where they sign in with them in school 
just before they leave in that final before that then that final week before the exams start um, in terms of papers available, unless the exam boards have put them together, which I don't think they actually have with the content removed, there are no examples of what they look like. Um, I mean, I, so that obviously is an exam board decision that they've made. Um, they can't, they haven't placed those in there. So there isn't that available. All that's available in terms of content for press papers is what is available online at the moment. Um, so that's the only thing that they've got, and that's the only example. Some teachers and some subjects might have some older papers that are relevant they could give them to do in terms of questions. Maths tend to have a lot of locked papers that are available of different sites. So maths is definitely one worth speaking to Miss Savile as head of maths. Just bear with me one second. <coughs> um, if they need some extra papers to work from. In terms of bringing their own laptop in, we would allow them to bring their own laptop in, but obviously that is it's their responsibility to look after it um, and make sure nothing happens to it and look after it carefully as well. And I, would, I think we'd need to check about how it would then be able to get onto our Wi-Fi potentially, if it could or not. Obviously, if a student does have a phone with them and they're revising, this is one of those occasions where students are allowed to have their phones out if they're using it for revision as well, not for any other purposes. So that's why they're allowed to use strategy zone for that um, as well. I'll just wait to see if there are any couple more questions that are coming in at all before I sign off. But year 11, I have to say, have um, behaved impeccably during the both sets of mocks that we've had and they are a real credit to themselves and i'm sure that they will continue that throughout their exams and you know we are we wish them every success during it and i'm sure they will go on to be incredibly successful as well so i think that might be the final questions if you've got any more questions and something suddenly comes to you or if you're watching this on the recording and you want to ask another question please um do come do send to email me um, i'm more than happy to receive emails and i'll come back to you with the answer or be able to direct you to the right person to speak to if they've got a concession of a laptop they use an exact a school's based laptop that has an exam mod, exam mode put on it um, they have to be in a certain mode for students to be able to use that same as they've been doing during their mock exams as well so it's school-based computers with an exam mode which locks everything that accesses the internet for it um, so it's quite carefully monitored in that respect so thank you very much for attending this evening um, as i said if you do have any further questions please do get in touch with one of us if there's any more guidance that comes out or anything changes which it can always do um, we will get that information out to you as soon as possible and i will issue this document and have that available for you tomorrow so you've got the hyperlinks on it as well thank you very much uh, for attending this evening and hopefully i'll see you all again soon take care thank bye. you bye bye